Hello friends! I filmed this video once already today, but I wasn't crazy with how it turned out. So round two, can you see my weird sock? I've on mismatching socks today. It's fun. And today I feel like talking about something that is super close to my heart, and that's concert etiquette. I'm going to try not to be a total crabby Appleton when it comes to this. I go to shows somewhat regularly, uh, by which I mean about once a month, and I am noticing really awful behavior at large venues, small venues, medium-sized venues, and it's just every genre of music and every demographic of person, and it's not just a Midwestern problem. We're we're all being very, very awful, and it's time to change that. And a lot of this could just be ignorance on people's part, or it could just be that people don't care. I don't know. So whether you are new to the concert scene, or whether you've done it a million times, I hope that maybe this video uh, is food for thought. Here we go. Start with our number one waiting for the man this has everything to do with showing up early a lot of shows that i end up going to are general admission and it's really a ginormous bummer when you show up and the line from the rail uh, is already clear to the middle of the auditorium this can usually be avoided by showing up early for instance, with Morrissey, there are people who will show up at 5 in the morning to be the first few people in the auditorium so they can be right against the rail. And I have no problem with that. I always show up a few hours early myself. And it's super rude when people show up late and they will push and shove their way to try and get to the front. That's very disrespectful to the people who pretty much made their day out of seeing this artist. You're not more important than those people. <sighs> Something that has been highly debated and argued about all throughout the history of people going to events is whether or not tall people should be allowed to stand in the front. Here's the thing, I'm tall. I am so tall, you guys. And if I show up early and I'm waiting there with everyone else, that's my spot. Normally, if I'm with someone or even I notice someone behind me who's shorter, I'll let them up in front of me, um, but that's my spot. I've waited hours to get to that spot. Same thing with all of these other tall people. Whoever decides to stand behind me, that's their choice. No one is forcing them to stand behind my big old tall broad shoulders and giant head. But also, if you're a tall person, and you show up late, don't stand in front of a smaller person. Super rude. Don't be rude. In the same vein, don't stand so close to me. Be mindful of not just your own space, but other people's space. Don't lean over the rail and stick your butt out. I didn't come here to grind with you, madam. That's rude. When I go to shows, I know that I have these long limbs. I love them, they're great for reaching things on high shelves, but if I'm dancing and flailing my arms, I'm definitely going to hit you in the face. We go to shows because we wanna dance and we wanna sing and we want to have the best time, but if no one else is like really dancing and there's not room to do it, have your own little dance party in your three cubic feet right there. Don't stop around, don't pogo. And most importantly, when you get into that auditorium, don't shove people, don't hit people. And uh, if you happen to be at a Morrissey show, don't bite people to try to get to the front. Let me take a selfie. Uh, Neil Tennant from Pet Shop Boys has actually complained about this, and that is taking a selfie when the show is in progress. Not only is your phone screen distracting, to the audience, <laughs> but it's really belittling to the performer. You paid money to see this artist perform and you're so self-involved that you would rather look at yourself in a tiny little screen and take a picture to try and preserve the moment. 
live in the moment. Take your selfie before or after. It's not that hard. Let's all go to the bar. <sighs> I don't want to come across as a prude when it comes to alcohol. I'm 27. I enjoy having a drink. I enjoy going to shows, especially local shows, and having a couple drinks. Where this becomes a problem is people tend to get too drunk at shows and oh man you don't want to embarrass yourself like that not only is everyone around you feeling that secondhand embarrassment but as you stand there yelling free bird you'll uh you'll be feeling good in the moment but you'll remember it the next morning and you will cringe so let's not make it an embarrassing event for all of us this next set of rules mostly a applies to new people who maybe haven't been to a show like this before. Uh, when it comes to the punk and the hardcore and even the metal scene, you guys are some of the most respectful audiences I've ever had the pleasure of being a part of. But it is when people come in and are first experiencing that scene that I have experienced uh, some incidences. So I won't see you in the pit. Don't force anyone to be involved in the, you know, mosh pit or wall of death or anything if they don't want to be. Last but not least is maybe the most obvious piece of etiquette that gets ignored all the time. Voices carry. This comes in so many different forms. Oh, one that is just absolutely insane and mind-boggling to me is wooing. There is a time to woo. Are you having a good night or hello Milwaukee? Woo! That's the perfect time to woo. If the artist is telling you a quiet thoughtful story about how that song came to be, don't woo! Woo! You're not cool. You're obnoxious. On this same note of people who no one really likes at the show, the dude who yells Freebird. It doesn't necessarily have to be Freebird. I mean, it could be you at the Fall Out Boy concert yelling, sophomore slumber comeback of the year! Sophomore slumber comeback of the year! Over and over again. They're probably not gonna play that. Artists have a set list that they have drafted up beforehand and very rarely will they deviate from that. You yelling an ultra rare b-side or outtake that you've only heard on YouTube is not going to result in that cute hipster girl being like, oh my gosh, you're the dude who kept yelling, um, oh, what's it called? Oh, um, please help the cause against the loneliness. Oh, you're just so deep. I thought I was the only one who liked that song. Why don't we um, go back to your place and we can do that thing where I put my lips on your lips and we press them together and make noises like <coughs> Perhaps the most controversial rule of concert etiquette I'm about to break into is loud Muppet singing. I am so guilty of this. You get caught up in the moment, you have all of that adrenaline, and you just want to sing along at the top of your lungs to those songs that you have listened to for years. But then you look around and you notice that that song is a rather quiet song and that everyone else is either singing softly to themselves or lip syncing along. And that, well, everyone paid to see the artist and if they wanted to hear my off-key singing, they would be buying tickets to sit in my bathroom and listen to me sing in the shower. Make sure to read the room. Don't disrupt, you know, hey there Delilah with, with your Muppet singing because it feels good for you to do it or because you think that that dreamy guy from the plain white tees is gonna be like, oh, listen to how loud she's singing the words. She must be our number one fan. I must take her back and we'll do the thing with a not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. And lastly, the one that I shouldn't even have to talk about, and that is talking through the entire flipping show. The past 
three concerts I have been to, there has been someone either beside me, in front of me, or behind me who just yaks through the entire show. And, okay, granted, I have a hard time focusing on multiple sounds. Like, my brain is always going a million miles a minute. So, multiple sounds makes me feel very overwhelmed. And when Carolyn is back there talking about her proctology appointment while I'm trying to listen to Morrissey sing There is a Light, which is also a light involved in proctology, but we'll put a pin in that. We'll come back to that later. Uh, it's super distracting. That's not what I paid to come see. And also, I'm pretty sure Carolyn's date didn't pay for these expensive tickets to listen to her talk about banal things. It's really not that hard to be decent. And that's really it. If there is anything I missed, please comment down below and let me know. If there's something you disagree with, let me know. I would love to know what different concert etiquette rules apply to different situations. I'm mostly just talking about rock and pop shows. But I'm rambling. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was somewhat enjoyable to watch and that I wasn't too much of a crabby Appleton. Ooh, the magic flute! Woo! <laughs> that would be fun, but don't do that. That would be incredibly rude.